pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to share your word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. I'm a man of limitation. I'm a man of faith, but you are holy. You are righteous. These people are waiting upon you, Lord, for a word that you inspire them, empower them, strengthen them, and ground them firmly in faith, even in many situations that may be affecting them, including myself. Lord, bless this word. As you bless the lighter, Isaiah, and Paul and others who have written this word, God Almighty inspired them, and now we can speak it as a Rema word for us to this morning. Lord God Almighty, pray that Lord you shall build us and inspire us and let this word come in freshness, not in the commonality we normally hear it, but in a newness and the freshness of your favor. Because we pray and believe through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I will turn myself now. Uh, I want to read Isaiah chapter number 26, verse 1 to 6. And the Bible says, In that day this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. God makes salvation its walls and lamparts. Open the gates that the righteous nation may enter, the nation that keeps faith. You keep in perfect peace him whose mind is steadfast because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord is the Lord eternal. He humbles those who draw on high. He raises the lofty city law. He levels it to the ground and casts it down to the dust. Feet trample it down the feet of the oppressed, the footsteps of the poor. Philippians chapter number 4, verse 4 to 7. Philippians 4. Um, come on, let me go there first. Quickly there. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all human understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, Whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned and received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Praise the Lord. I want to focus on verse 3 of Isaiah, chapter number 26 where we have read, where the Bible says, or where the word states that you keep in perfect peace his, him, or her, whose mind is steadfast or is stayed on you because he trusts in you. You keep them in perfect peace whose minds or whose lives or whose entities or whose lives are steadfast or they are stayed on you. Praise God. You are coming from a 40 days fast. We in Seattle KCC, we are coming from a 21st day fast. And we had something we call covenant renewal every year since I went there, 2013 to date. Every year we start off with a covenant renewal. And this year, covenant renewal preceded by 21 days of fasting. We do have a covenant renewal service that happened on 27. And the, 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 theme for, the theme for that season, January, has been Malachi 2.5, where the Bible says the Lord had a covenant with Levi, a covenant of life and of peace. This covenant was with Levi. It's the background is in Exodus. 
32 and 26 to 29, where the Levites, after Moses came from the mountain, he found guys have constructed or have made a, 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 a calf, a golden calf, and they had subtracted or drifted to idolatry. He asked, who is on the Lord's side? Who is on the Lord's side? And then the Levites came to him, and then he said, you take a sword, you take a sword and don't let allow anybody who has worshipped this calf survive. And the Bible says in Exodus that they did not even care for their parents. They never cared for their brothers. They never cared for anybody so long as the honor of the Lord was at stake. They killed everyone. And the Bible says the Lord had a covenant of, of, of priesthood for all those Levites that they remain servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And then in Numbers 25, verse 12, we see a, a, a huge, an awesome, a superman called Phinehas, not a superman, a servant of God, a Levite, by name Phinehas, who's when the, 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 this prophet, Bar 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 this priest or whatever he was, Baram, in, X, in Numbers 23, he's tried to cast these people, and they are they were not castable. I don't know whether that is right English, Dakitali. Uh, they could not be cast. Let me use proper English. And so it happened that uh, Baram again advised Barak, if you want to these people to be cast, entice them with more but women, entice them with idolatry and adultery, and they will be able you they will attract the curse of the Lord. And so at this time, Phinehas, when these guys had done so, a woman by name Cosby and a man by the name Zipri, a priest came even onto the door of the tabernacle. And Moses and Aaron and others were praying at the entrance. And even Phinehas was praying there. And then they realized that these guys, when they enter there, when they bring adultery and they bring idolatry, we are finished. He took us fear. We need courageous men in Kenya. We need courageous people in Kenya. We need spiritually empowered people who will take courage and spear these guys and spear these situations until the plague is removed. So Phineas, by that courage, because of the honor of the Lord, he pinched, I mean, he speared these guys and the plague was stopped. When you read Numbers 25, you realize that. And the Bible says, because of my honor, because of honor, the Phineas and honor of the Lord, I will enter into a covenant of perpetual priesthood and peace for his descendant. Can somebody say amen? amen? Can somebody, you are looking at me like I'm not a Presbyterian. Yes, I'm, not, I'm a Presbyterian. <laughs> you guys, you are looking, hey, what kind of a guy is this? this, this. <laughs> so that's the background of the covenant of life and peace. And Malachi was very angry. And it's because the Levites there had compromised and they were they were spreading falsehood and other issues, and the Kegogona had been defiled. And so he was wondering, can we go back to those days when Phinehas was there, when the rivers were there, who were courageous, who could stand for God in their times? Hallelujah. We need guys today who will stand for their God, who will stand for the honor of the Lord. And who will have a covenant of life and peace and move on not only for themselves but for the generation to come. Hallelujah! That our generation is not only blessed today but even others who are coming are also blessed. Somebody say hallelujah. No, I like that. When guys are talking to me then can't be excited. Hallelujah! And because of my preaching maybe you can add me five more minutes. On the basis, on this basis, therefore, I want to focus on the word peace. As Isaiah wrote these songs of praise about Judah. And that word had been strong. You know, <laughs> when I prayed, when I was coming home and praying for the kind of preaching I would do here, actually I was directed to King, First Kings chapter number 18 and 19, the Kegogona at Mount Carmel. And I struggled with it. With the guys in Deliverance Church feed this, this preaching, I struggled. And this, this come, oh, you are still in the covenant renewal. Give them a glimpse of what you are testing eh, and what you are working with. 
So we are still within the renewal. Tell somebody we are still within the renewal. So I'm focusing on this word peace. Isaiah wrote this song of praise about Judah. And Judah was amidst chaotic situations. Chaotic environment. The surrounding nations. The surrounding cities. Isaiah 25 verse 10 in Asema. The ruin is desolate. And the entrance of every house is bare. Isaiah 25 verse 10. If you read Isaiah 25 verse 2. The Bible says. You have made a city a heap of rubble. The fortified town is a ruin. Isaiah 25 verse 3. Refers to a city of ruthless nation. This song, even if you can contextualize it, if I may use the word contextualize it, is surrounded by chaotic situation. And uh, I would say, you can compare yourself, you can compare yourself with this city, with this city of Judah. The Bible says this song will be sung in Judah. Ah, you guys. This song will be sung in my house. Hello? This song will be sung in our nation. This song, you can impress Judah and say to yourself, this song will be sung in my family, Wanyeke family. It is a strong song. It makes a strong nation. Ha! So if this song, somebody can be musical there, okay. This song, if it is sung in my family, it will be a strong family. If it is sung in your church, Deliverance Church, it will be a strong church. If it will be sung in Bishop House and family, you will be a strong bishop. Somebody say hallelujah. This song will be sung in Judah. This song will be sung in Nairobi. And we are singing it in Seattle. We shall be a strong nation. We are strong people. We are strong families. We are strong individuals. Hallelujah. A mean is chaotic. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All the other crowd are seeking, sir. All the other crowd are seeking, sir. This song will be sung in Judah. And he is saying we have got a strong city. God makes salvation around it. It was in rampart, and it caused open the gates that the righteous nation may enter the nation or the church or the family or the heart that makes peace, that keep peace. Hallelujah. And then he said, he will keep, oh, yes, sir. he will keep in perfect peace those men and women, those nations or Judah, that you keep them in perfect peace because their minds or their hearts or their lives are steadfast, are stayed on the Lord. No compromise with the world. No falling back or sideways. Strong in the Lord, walking in strength of the Lord. Can somebody say amen? I thought you guys, you shout hallelujah. I don't like our Presbyterian when you normally told us, those guys us, uh, they wear chorus and uh, Steve next guys and things like that. They sing with their order. You guys, you jump so and you shout. We are also shouting. We are also jumping. We are also moving. And God is great that I can stand in the pulpit of the Reverend's Church and preach the word. Hallelujah. The goodness of me going there in state is, is connecting me with these kind of guys and others. Hallelujah. So the Lord will keep us. He will keep this nation of Kenya. He will keep your family. He will keep this church in perfect peace because we keep faith with him. So what is peace then? What is peace? What is peace? You know, peace is a very valuable commodity. President, you ever sit in councils, group of heads like the IGAD, trying to find peace for Southern Sudan, for Somalia, and other places. When this one stops, another one erupts. When this one stops, another one erupts. What? Those are political peace. Cessation of war, 
so that there could be some development and life can continue. But what biblically is peace? In Hebrew, it's shalom. In Greek, it's irin. They have got the same, several similar meanings. In the New Testament, peace is talking about irin. And in Old Testament, it's shalom. So what does shalom mean? Uh, before I tell you about Shalom, can you give your neighbor a high five and tell him, Shalom, Shalom. You give him a better high five. Shalom, Shalom. You heard I'm a teacher. If you are not excited of this word, you will stand like the quakes and we speak to all of us, you guys start. Shalom, Shalom. Those guys over there, they are not. I told, I told you to give your neighbor a high five. Give your neighbor a high five. Tell him shalom. Shalom. Can you make it a bit musical? Shalom. 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 What do you promised? Shalom. Shalom. When this guy is refused, we shall go with him. Shalom, 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 shalom. Yeah. Shalom, shalom. Can the sun sing? Shalom, shalom. Because there was, I think the introduction was here. These are the guys who seems like. And, uh, you know, when I was in Sunday Day 3, we used to be grounded on the giraffe side. Those guys, those, those, those many years ago, giraffe and, and the leopard and the lion. So if you don't make it, you go straight, you are graduated to giraffe's side. And then you can graduate back to lion side. Let me not classify you to that class. Hello, Shalom, Shalom. Shalom, 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 shalom. Can you speak in tongues? Hey, you know the Nigerians, you say, hey, hey, what is peace? Shalom. It means completeness, soundness, well-being. Peace is the idea of security, safety, huh? prosperity, well-being, you know, intactness, togetherness, firmness, wholeness. A focus on security means that my safety is well guaranteed and they'll bring a sense of satisfaction. Shalom means good health. How many want good health? Shalom, shalom. Good health. Good will. How many want good will? This side is still in trouble. Good will. Good will from the Lord, not from the politician. Hello? Not even from me, but from the Lord. The good news from the Lord. Hallelujah. It means triumph or victory. It tells me I am walking in victory in the land of the living. When I have shalom, shalom, shalom. Other than triumph and victory, peace, shalom talks of harmony, a family that is at peace is harmonious family. They are harmonious. And the church that is at peace is harmonious church. All people can gather together at their breasts. A pastor who will have shalom. Who, <laughs> a pastor who will bless the church. Or a neon of a VFC will bless the church because he is harmonious. He is a man of quality or a woman of quality. Is tranquility. In other words, there is calmness. There is, there is stability. There is future. A husband who is a man of shalom is a husband who will give his family a future. A hope. He will bless the wife. 
He will bless the sons and daughters. He will not call them you mekora nyinyi. He will call them you saints, you evangelists, you honorables, you highly favored people. That God has blessed me. Hi. Hey. Hey. Hi. People of Shalom. Teachers of Shalom will bless their pupils. Doctors will not tell you, bless their patients. Policemen will do the same. We have a harmonious nation. Hallelujah. Corruption will not be there. Hakuna ya kamwene. We are all served as Kenyans, brothers and sisters, people of the same God, moving towards our destiny with the hope that God has given us. A man of Shalom have a vision for his family. Oh, a woman, they are not fighting who is, who is the head or the, you know, you are a harmonious family. You are walking in the open heavens. You are not the tails, but the heads. Can somebody say hallelujah? Shalom, shalom. You know when, you know when you teach Sunday school and lower classes, those children are very nice. They are not that they are don't, they, they don't remember themselves their status. They have royalty to the teacher. Come on, come through. And you hear those good voices. Come on, come through. And when you go to these kind of guys, and now measuring me where they are measuring to the standard. If it's scholarly, it is researched. Hello? It, you are not intimidating me. It is well researched. And it is also a reserve award for you. Look at somebody, neighbor, and if he is not excited, tell him, I don't know when you'll be excited. If you cannot be excited by Sharom. Kunashita, and you can eat up out to die there. I was ministering before, so you are blessed. The above explanations talked about Shalom. And much more. Actually, when I went to the Concordas, I could not finish this, my Bible, this one, another big NIV Concordas. Pieces have got so many references from the Old Testament and the New Testament. They talked about the well being. And over and above again, Peace, shalom, means spiritual well-being associated with righteousness and truth. So a man of peace, the Bible says we have got peace with God because we are reconciled to him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So when you wish one another, if somebody is married and he hugs his wife or hugs her husband, and tells him or her, Shalom, baby. Sikutakuwa na chakula ya kutosha. Sifudi takuwa sawa sawa. Si baba ki, aki, asante. This, this Shalom. There have been so many people here. Seeing I am struggling, and they cannot rise. Yes, man, be blessed. You have got that portion of this message. The Bible says, those who honor <laughs> or even they give a glass of water to a servant of God, double portion. <laughs> Where was I? <laughs> Let me take this one. Can, some, can I have a metoke first one? <laughs> This one I can keep, but you keep that one for me. Shalom. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when you wish a daddy hold his son or her daughter and wish or her shalom, that son or daughter is going somewhere. When you are a boss and you are wishing you are people, you are under shalom, then that company or institution is going somewhere. When your bishop is a bishop of shalom, that church is going somewhere. Shalom, shalom. Praise the Lord. 
When you use somebody's shalom, you are wishing him all that wealth combined. You know, Kikuyu, mimi ni Kikuyu, hatukua tunasalimiana we mwega. Si hii meletwa juzi. Tulikuwa tunasalimiana ni kuhoro. Is it cool? Is it peaceful? Is everything okay? Nati, ni atea. Sasa mkiniuliza mimi, ni atea ni kumanisha. Demoli kagua, ni atea. So, <laughs> I, I think they are, <laughs> these words are rich. Ni kuhoro. Is it okay? Is it calm? Shalom carries all the ingredients of well-being. So even, I was trying to research where did this praise the Lord come from. Because already we keep on praising the Lord by our own uh, lifestyle. But when we come to greeting, we should tell one another, Shalom! Shalom! Because you are wishing one another, Shalom! Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for the peace of Kenya. Pray for the peace of this family. Shalom! Shalom! You are wishing them health. You are wishing them hope. You are wishing them all oh, her destiny. And even when it is within the nuclear family, that is a powerful family. Even when things are not working okay, when there is peace, there is blessing. There is favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So your theme this year is open heavens. And part of that is that the Lord you open for this righteous nation. And this righteous church, that they may walk in open shalom. Nation of shalom and church of shalom. Now may I speak prophetically and say, may the Lord this year of 2019 grant you an open heaven and grant you shalom. And grant you shalom. And grant you shalom. And grant you shalom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those two guys who are studying, Shalom, double portion. And that one raising both his heart, Shalom. Shalom. We can connect Bishop. Shalom, Shalom. A nation of righteousness receives an open gates. Or a church of righteousness, or full of righteousness, or a heart, or a life that is righteous before God, receive open gates, open gates from the Lord. That again, when you receive open gates from the Lord, it means you got victory over your enemies, victory over poverty, victory over diseases, victory over. All manner of challenges that you come on your way. I don't know whether I'm ready within time, but I would say this. Somebody is rushing before me and writing some other things. Shalom, shalom. You know, there is somebody researching. <laughs> you want to compete with him. There's a good guy. There's a good guy. He is telling you, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God for that, shalom. Jesus is our peace. John 14, 27. The Bible says, this is a famous chapter, not a common chapter, but a famous chapter where the Bible have got very rich, very rich themes. Uh, Let not your heart be troubled, believe in God and believe in me. And then the Lord said that the disciples asked him, where is the Father? Show us the Father. We shall be okay. Philip asked Jesus. And then Jesus told him, when you have seen the, me, you have seen the Father. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then again, he went on giving a lot of good things to the disciples, assuring them. And then finally, verse 27, he says, peace, my peace, I live with you. My peace, I live with you. I do not give you peace as the world gives. This is not political peace. This is my peace. Jesus' peace. Remember, Isaiah 9, 6, 8. He is the prince of peace. So Jesus himself is peace. Because when you know him, Romans 5, 1, you are justified before God. And by faith, you have got peace 
with God. So he is a carrier. He is a holy carrier. He is a healthy carrier. His nature is peace. Jesus is our peace. That's why I can talk to uh, my brother from Luonyanza, my brother. I can talk to my brother in, in Kambaran, my brother. I can talk to my nearly brothers as brothers and sisters. There are stereotypes around all this situation. But because of Christ, we are brothers and sisters. We have got a better hardship than the conversion or quotation or hardship. We got a health, a divine heart sick that can never die. My peace, I give you my peace. The peace that has been put to test, that's scholarly. My peace, no, I'm not intimidating you. Did I call it? The peace <laughs> that has been put to test, it has been proved to live wrong generation upon generation because Jesus died on the cross and he rose again from the dead. This is, that's my revelation, it is resurrection peace or resurrected peace. You can write that. Don't take it to the bank. You can write that and put it to the heart. Resurrection peace. Peace that is completely and parallel to the world can never be compared with anything in this world. This is God's divine peace. The peace of God that can never be, can never be compared to anything. And now I say, watch this. This peace is transformatory. It changes nature. It is metamorphic. Hello? From the word metamorphosis. See, was the five science from the egg to to pupa to cut from the egg pupa come on from the egg lava caterpillar pupa and then adult metamorphosis it when you have got this piece you are never the same again when you have got this piece you are never the same Again, it's transformatory. This peace brings is miraculous. It's a miracle. Changes a man who was coming home and hating the throne and fighting his wife. And now he sees her as a princess in the family, first lady of this family. A woman who had had wrinkles, start having straight face. Nanyule yake inaanza kukaangu, anaanza kutua shuhuda ya upia. Neto sarero anekai, nekai temuweza. Hello. Buenas <laughs> sana. It's a miraculous peace because it's coming from Jesus Christ. It brings harmony. It brings order. Brings order, not Presbyterian order, but spiritual order and life order. Where you go home from work. You don't pass through other places when you reach home intoxicated. Or you are kept. <laughs> and I started hearing stories from Inoro. I have been listening to Inoro. And was wondering what's happening with the family these days. What is happening with the men and things like that. You have. You are ordered in your life. In your appetite. In your moral life. In everything that you are. You got order. Yes. Hallelujah. The peace of God, my peace. And again, he assured the disciples when he told them, My peace, there was battle coming, there were challenges coming, but we have never seen courageous men, a minis hostile, chaotic situation who are people of peace and victory than the apostles. Philip could go to Samaria and finish Simon of Magus and defeat witchcraft, and the whole nation, all the city is saved. These are strong guys. What am I saying? I am selling you to be men and women of peace. Starting from yourself and cutting it all over. Let this peace spring, spill over to your places of work. Let it spill to schools. Let it spill to, uh, to hospitals. Let it spill to your own relatives. Let peace prevail all over. Hallelujah. Miraculous peace. And now, Paul says, 
Is the red light coming? Okay. Now, Paul is a man, is a doctor of law, professor of law. He started at Gamerier. And by any standard, when you reach, when you, when you read the credentials of Paul in Philippians chapter number three, circumcised on the eighth day, so he became a Jew by, by covenant relationship. He is the tribe of Benjamin, the favored tribe. He is a member of Sanhedrin, the highest of Supreme Court. He sits with Magara. He, <laughs> in terms of righteousness by the law, Hakuna Kameni, this guy is highly qualified. Huh? But he said, <laughs> you are having guys there. I don't know what's wrong with your titles. Somebody has never seen a theological college. He has never studied or written any paper. He does not even know what a thesis is. He doesn't know what a dissertation is. He, no longer, he knows no scholar, any scholar, even the simplest of all, even African scholars. But he is having a title. Doctor, professor. <laughs> His worship, the righteous. She do him and then... When Paul is running away from titles, some other guys are running, they have no peace. Their hearts are chaotic. They want peace, but they cannot find it. Paul is saying, for the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I regard those things as refuse. For the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. And then he comes to two women here. Wonderful women. You listen. You guys, you don't read your Bibles. I have got a problem with this law. <laughs> Philippians 3, chapter number. <laughs> See, Philippians chapter number 4. The Bible says, I, I, I do what? I do what? I pray to you, you dear, and St. Turkey, not Eunice. You dear, and Sent back to agree with the Lord. Sometimes people are disagree in the church. Find sometimes chaotic situations. But Paul is giving us like an emotional antidote. You know, Dawaya Kupapasa. Even if they quarrel, and there are another Rackstad guy called Clement here, all their names are in the book of life. So no, not me, me, not all quarrels are evil. I don't know why Paul is saying. Agree in the Lord. But he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And I will say, rejoice. And again, he recognizes people are anxious. Like now we're anxious because of the strikes. Uh, we're anxious because of the drought and many other things. And people here, we are also anxious. And he is telling them, do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with us giving, present your request to God. And maybe I will come with another preaching on that a sermon um, about faith and prayer. And so here, but I will confine myself to what I came to say. And he said, and the peace of God who transcends all understanding will keep your heart and mind into the Lord Jesus. So Paul here, with such highly credentials, which he regards them as refuse, he comes here and says that there is a peace of God that surpasses all human understanding. This peace again, boys, in falling, that which come from God is act as sentry guarding the saints. You know, it act as a gateway to prevent those attacks to our emotions, to our well-being, to our situations that may be overwhelmed by attacks of fear or anxiety or even temptations. This peace surpasses all human understanding. Then I come to my sweet point here. Romans 16 verse 12. He says that um, the God of peace will soon cast Satan under your feet. Therefore, this peace is a gift from God. This is a divine gift from God that fights our inner conflicts 
our inner walls, our inner situation, and make us more victorious. And now I can say these words. Speak like somebody who has been to school and say, The sense of this peace in Romans 16 is referring to us is a peace of action. Peace of conquest. Ushidani, kushidana. It's a peace of uh, victory. Triumphing. This peace overcomes the world. So when you have the peace of God, you are an avola overcomer. You defeat the world. You defeat your fears. Those who are singles, you still have got hope that the Lord will come your way. How to work when we pango ya kanto? Utaka kiteja na useme bona na kuja. Ikiwa ni nikuji ya mimi. Ikiwa bona nikuji ya mimi na nika nika ona muschana na nipeda. You know, you don't. I don't. Now I look somebody. I wish I could show you my photos. <laughs> you go and talk to a sister because now I got saved in Bachaku Jesus College and I was being cancelled and uh, challenged by others and say, come out. Let me talk in Kikuya, then I translate. What happened? I don't know how to do it. 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 So, how oh, because you have been born again, come out. And the li li ladies are cheated to get married. Many have been cheated, by the way, which is true. Somebody comes with a car, written PSV, and because you don't know what PSV means, <laughs> you are taken around here, as Zima man, and you start testifying to other girls and telling you, you know, I am ratted. I have somebody who is, uh, you know, I'm not like you. You only realize on the day of wedding, if it happens at all, that that was a hired car to cheat you. <laughs> but now the Lord is preparing that man to be what he should be. Can somebody say Shalom? <laughs> so, <laughs> so the Lord has transformed me. Because those times, uh, you go and talk to a sister, you know, at the time they were born again. There was not these children, they were more than men. At the time, I think there were few, few as our times. Then a sister would look at you and tell you, who are you? Nikurajira. And you go for another two months, you repent before God for uttering those things. <laughs> so you can stay strong as a young man. You can fight rejection, and one day you fight victory in the Lord. Can somebody shout shalom? This peace is conquering to conquer. It is victorious. What am I saying, by the way? All this, if I was presenting a, a, a paper, somewhere, I would say, what am I really bringing to you? I am bringing something weighty. So when you wear it, like a cloth, or when you embrace it, opens your way. Amen. Fight your battles. Rift you from where you are. Get you somebody of favor. Build you. Establish you. You become a person of favor. Can somebody say amen? amen. He did when I let me look at these guys. These guys may be... So... This peace from Romans 16, as Paul is saying, is a conquest peace. This peace overcomes the world. And again, the goodness is this. When the Lord, when the Bible declares that he will crush the devil at our feet, then the Lord will overcome the destroyer of our status. Kwa hivi hakuna nyumba na inahitaji kuwa nyumba kama ni Bosnia, Hexovina. Si nyumba ya vita ni nyumba ya amani. Kwa sababu mfame wa amani anatawara kure. Hallelujah. Ah. The Lord will, because he is stronger than the destroyer of peace. And soon he will bring this enemy right at our feet. Therefore, brethren, let me summarize and say. We 
give God the peace that surpasses all human understanding. Then this peace is incomprehensible. Hatuwezi elewa. Hatuwezi siwezi eleza yote vile ilivyo. It means we as a church today at the voice of my at the hearing of my voice we got God's favor. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Weka shalom 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 shalom. We got God's favor. Can somebody say amen? You can stand on your feet now. Stand on your feet now and, uh, and tell your neighbor, you got God's favor. And you tell yourself, I got God's favor. I got God's favor. Mimi na amani ya buwana. Nina kitabulisho ya buwana. We are standing victorious. Shout, I am standing victorious. I am standing triumphant. I am standing victorious. I am blessed. I am blessed. We are standing as a church. Victorious. 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 Somebody say hallelujah. And the enemy is right at our feet. The enemy is right at our feet. Now let us build faith. The enemy is right at our feet. And do you continue ya migu yangu? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you continue, by the way, when you are passing of peace, because you connect, because of the network, the GPS of the Lord can find you. When you are served the Lord in this church, it is delightful to the Lord. When you pray, it is delightful to the Lord. When you worship, it is delightful to the Lord. It is actually a spiritual sacrifice acceptable in the sight of the Lord. Somebody said hallelujah. Somebody shout shalom. Hallelujah. We are highly fevered. Are you guys? Say I am highly fevered. I'm highly fevered. Shalom, shalom. Now let's turn to Hebrews 12, 13 and head touch your neighbor. Is it touching your neighbor or greet your neighbor? Yei dia modo umure ni kwedete Yei dio shoke Moe moko na igoro Yei dio gyumwe Solevo In a king lesson, I say, greet somebody and tell him or oh, how you love him. Lift your hearts and praise the Lord. Greet your neighbor. And if it's your wife beside you, hug her. If it's your wife, hug her. Look at these guys, they are shying. This is the best place to hug your neighbor. The best place to hug. Watch out there. You are Valentine. Sit you in the Yona Mawaya Valentine. Watch out your men in there. I'm saying you greet your neighbor. <laughs> greet your neighbor. And look at him or her. Na mwambie hii maneno. Usimwachilie, usimwachilie. Just be fair. Take somebody, not two. Look at him. Ah, ah jamaa, kupe ni kama kanisa letu PCA. Unajua wakati mwingine una watu wanakaa wakisikia neno ni kama wako kwa mkutano. Hawawezi move. They are just static. Paka mahubiri ya ishe. You guys need to read. This is the word of God. The word of God is sweet. Aye. You go home encouraged, empowered, you know, enlightened, you know, you know, stirred up. Hmm. Ah, hii maneno. May the God of peace, who through the blood of eternal covenant, Brought back from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep. Now you are turning prophetic. Now ask him or her her name. Him or her her name. Umabia him aneno. Ikiwa ni Agnes, ni Josephino, or ni Kegodo, or Kemani. 
Ogetahi wadufu. Ohuema. Halo. Shalom, shalom. <laughs> May the Lord reframe it again. My prayer for you this year. Kegodo. If he has got a family, Kegodo and your family. May the Lord this year. If you are single, uh, tell him even if you are single. Even if you are single parent. Even if you are even if you are widow or widower. Regardless of the situation. Kegodo. May the Lord equip you. With everything good. With every no more, you emphasize with everything good. If it's a job, if it's a child, if it's education, if it's a house, may the Lord equip you with everything good and spiritual resources for doing his will. And may he work in us. May he work in you. What is pleasing? What is pleasing? What is pleasing to him? Through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Shalom. Shalom. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shalom. Shalom, 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 hallelujah, shalom, may the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, may the Lord raise his face upon you, and give, be gracious to you, may the Lord make his face to shine upon you, and give you peace, may he open doors, May he cross others that are not fit into you. May he open wide his doors and doors of heaven and give you peace. Somebody say hello.